How many of you guys have been enjoying this series on whole family? Yeah. Well, we're going to find out just how much because we're going to do a, qu- quite a bit of review up front here. This is such an important series and so good for us uh, to hear the, the messages that have been coming, uh, have, that have been coming out so far. But before we get started, I want to share with you, if you were here, uh, I don't know when the last time I taught was, it's been a few weeks, but uh, if you'll remember, uh, for Christmas I was gifted a Chuck Norris calendar. So I, I brought some Chuck Norris facts to you last time. I saved all the good ones from the last time I talked, so I got some more for you. You ready? This guy's a man, okay? Listen to this. When Chuck Norris turned 18, his parents moved out. <laughs> all right? There are no streets or bridges named after Chuck Norris. No one would ever dare cross Chuck Norris. <laughs> when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, he had three missed calls from Chuck Norris. <laughs> this is... The only time Chuck Norris was ever wrong was when he thought he was mistaken. And then finally, Chuck Norris doesn't lick postage stamps. He just stares at them until they wet themselves. (laughs) How many of you wish you had that power right there? I mean, that guy. What a gift. You know, I never would have thought this was like the best gift my wife got me this Christmas. It's the gift that keeps on giving, you know. Every day, I'm excited to flip it over and see what Chuck Norris is doing next. So, praise the Lord. All right, we better pray real quick because we need to, we're going to need the Lord's help as we go through today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to come and to hear your word together with other believers and to be strengthened. And so we invite you, Holy Spirit, you're the teacher, come and teach us what we need to know this morning. Uh, I yield myself to you and we yield collectively our hearts to you to uh, speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit is, is the one who's the teacher. If you try to, like, glean something from me or get something from me, you're gonna, you're, it's going to fall short and come up empty. But if you open your heart up to the Lord when the Word is taught, He's going to get something to you that you probably didn't even know that you needed. Yeah, right. right? And if you think, man, there's a lot here that I don't think that I maybe need right now, you better hang on to it because there's going to come a time when you're going to need it. Yeah. Right? And so God's Word is so good like that. So I want to I review... Really, we've been in this, I think this is the eighth week that we've been in this series called Whole Family, and I want to review some because it's important, and it's important for what uh, I want to end up talking about today. So we'll just see how, if you took notes, you can kind of go back through here, but the first week we, the, the first week of this series was called Having a Family fi- of Faith in a World Full of Fear. How, how many of you, just, that sounds good to you? Yeah. I want to have a family of faith in a world that's chocked full of fear right now. Yeah. And so what we talked about during that week was that, Pastor said, when our reasoning is based on what I've seen and what I've experienced, then I'm going to become hopeless. When, that, when, when, when I'm going through life and my reasoning is going to be based on the things that I see and the things I've experienced, I'm going to come up short and I'm going to be hopeless for what's next. So this is where my reasoning needs to begin. God is able. God is, this is where our reasoning in, in everyday life should start. God is able, yes. right? Amen. And I love what it says here. You can throw Hebrews eleven nineteen 19 up. It said, Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able. Yes. This was his reasoning, that if my son died, God was able to bring him back to life again. So that's where his reasoning started and ended with God is able. If you're going to have a whole family, you're going to have to start to reason this way. God is able. Because there's things that you and your family are going to experience where you're going to need the power of God on your life. And that's the first thing that you need to reason in your heart and in your mind before anything else. God is able. Amen. The second week, uh, uh, Joe Costello taught a message called No Calm, No Bomb. How How many of you were here for that? And it was so good. It's talking about how the enemy tries to get into the communications that we have with our family, with our loved ones, and, and he's trying to get in, right? He is trying to get in, uh, if you're thinking about like walkie-talkies or your comms, we're wanting to keep him out of our communication channels. You know, the reason that he's trying to get in there is for his purpose of stealing, killing, and destroying. Like, that, that's what he's about. Like, the, uh, the enemy of your life is very active in his job description to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we need, we, it's good to know 
that the channels of our communication with the people in our lives and the ones that we love, if, if we're not paying attention and vigilant, then he could slip in undetected, right? And he could be whispering things to you that you pass along, and now he's just taken over your communication channels. And we've got to be vigilant to know that he's out there trying to do that, right? So it's very important. How many of you have heard that when we're talking about relationships, communication is key, Communication is key. That's like in every conference or whatever you're going to hear about marriage or relationships. Communication, it's important. It's very important. Amen? The third week we talked, we did a message called A Long Way Off where Pastor was talking about how words are powerful tools. Words don't just, they don't just tell a story. Words don't just tell a story. They produce fruit in our lives, whether good or bad, right? They produce fruit in our lives. Um... And I, I love what he brought out in that message, too. He was talking about how, you know, God is the first, God's a family man. God's a family man. He's the one who instituted the family. He's a family man. So as much as you love your family, think about how much more God loves your family and God loves you. And think about how God uses his words. God doesn't just use his words to tell the story of what you've done and what your past looks like. He uses his words to speak life to you and to speak to your identity of who you are in his son, Christ. Amen? I love the, the story of the prodigal son, which is really what a lot of this stemmed from here. Um, when, when the prodigal son came back, the father was looking for him while he was a long way off. He was looking for him. But I, I love what he did to the other brother as well. He spoke to both, to both his sons right there, and he spoke to who they are. Not to what you've done, not to where you've been, but to who you are. And God does the same for us. Amen? Our words are very powerful. And then the fourth week, are y'all, stay, are y'all following here? Yeah. The fourth week, we talked about the thief. Does anybody remember what the thief is? <sighs> Boy, am I glad we're reviewing. <laughs> In, huh? Comparison. Thank you, people on staff at Beyond Church. <laughs> we talked about how comparison is a thief. This is a good thing. I'm really, this really sets me up for what I want to talk about today. Um, so um, if, you, if you don't want me to go too hard later, then you better participate a little bit. <laughs> but comparison is a thief. It will steal from you. The Bible tells us that when we compare ourselves uh, with others, it calls us unwise. It's unwise when we compare ourselves to other people. This is actually what we're talking about in our small groups. We had our small group last night, and we were talking about this, and you know that the children of Israel, they compared themselves to the giants who were in the promised land? They, they said, we're like grasshoppers in, their, in our eyes and in their eyes. That's what they said. They were comparing themselves. God had already given them a promise. He'd already told them what was theirs, but they were comparing themselves with someone else. And what, it, what did it lead to? It led to their death and extinction in the wilderness. Like, comparison can actually lead to death. If we, don't, if we don't look to the word of God for our standard, right? The word of God is our standard, and comparison will steal from you if you allow it. Uh, and then on Mother's Day, Pastor Evan talked about love and forgiveness. You all remember that? Love and forgiveness. And um, one of the things, too, that may come out today is we've got to remember that our love for each other is what's going to show the world that we're disciples of Jesus, I think sometimes as Christians, we forget that. We just think, well, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. But if, they're, like, if you don't show love for other believers and for others, who in this world is going to know that you're a disciple of Jesus? Not one person. Not one person will know that you're a disciple of Jesus if you don't outwardly show love for others. Amen. And we talked about the importance of forgiveness. And you know that walking in love... I know that's kind of a real churchy term, but living a life filled with love for other people is going to hurt your flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to walk in love. My flesh wants what my flesh wants. It doesn't want to walk in love with others. And so it's, it's, a, very, it's a spiritual thing to do this, and we've got to have God's word on the inside of us to live that out. You know, and, and this is the key right here. If you want to know how I can live in love better, walk in love with others better, here's the key. Ask myself, would someone else like this? You know, growing up, you heard maybe even church and Sunday school, the golden rule, 
do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Has, has anyone heard that recently? Anybody? I don't hear that as much recently. Uh, or just in life now. I don't hear that. But this is what walking in love is. How would I respond? I need to respond to that person the way I would want them to respond to me in this situation. What would I like right here? What would I prefer? And then do that. That's what walking in love is. And then two weeks ago, Pastor talked about guarding our home and how guarding our home starts with guarding our heart, right? We know this in uh, Proverbs 4.23. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the very course of your life. So guarding our homes will start with guarding our heart. This is key right here. And it's like what Pastor was saying, that this is a decision that you have to make. The decisions that you make don't just affect you. So if I, as the, as the father of my house, as the husband, as the leader of my household, if I don't guard my heart, then I am not protecting the atmosphere of my home. Right. I'm allowing the enemy to come in and to do whatever he wants because I'm not guarding my heart. And so as men, as leaders, you're, you're to make sure that you're guarding your heart for your home. It's what's going to set the atmosphere of your home. And then last week... It was kind of a, it, I guess that last week was kind of part two of guarding your home where um, there were some interesting things said like, are you being the devil? How many of you were here for that? I'm like, man, I don't know. I'd have to ask, am I being the devil? But you know what that word is. It's a, a slanderer, accuser. Man, there's times when we could be doing the devil's job for him. How stinky is that? Man, I don't want to be doing his job for him, slandering and accusing others. And so I've got, I've got to watch what, I, what I'm talking. I shouldn't be talking about others. Uh, Courtney, my wife, has, she heard something that she's been saying lately. Um, are other people safe when they're not around me? Are others safe when they're not around? I need to watch, am I talking about others? And this is something that I don't think we think is that big of a deal or we'll joke about it or, or talking about others a little bit, but this can creep in. And you can be doing this without even knowing that you're doing it. And it's a big deal. And it's what, this is what the devil does. He slanders, he slanders you to God. He slanders you to other people. He slanders you to you. He accuses you to you. And we don't need to be doing his job for him. Amen? So, uh, some of you maybe remember some of that. Some of you maybe didn't. And that's really important because what we're going to be talking about today is doing something with what we've heard. We must do something with what we've heard because here's the deal. This series on whole family will mean absolutely nothing to me if I don't actually apply any of it to my life. So we can get together and say that was, that's a cute message, that was a good series, that's cool. But if my family can't tell that I've changed from what I've heard at church, then what good has that done me or my family? None. And so this is what we're going to talk about, and we're going to be pretty bold with it today. Are you all ready? Yeah. All right. So I want to start in James. We're going to start in James chapter 1. We're going to read 20 through, 22 through 25. It says, but be doers of the word. Somebody say doer. doer. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. Okay, so let's read this again. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks in a mirror. He sees what he looks like. I've got a mirror back here, and I've got a board. We're going to do just some simple teaching stuff this morning. I don't know about you, but sometimes it just helps to, even when you say words, to write them down and you can look at them and it'll help us learn, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So I've got a mirror. So it, I, now that I've done this, I feel like I've actually done this on stage before. Y'all don't like that? How about these people? Y'all like that? Huh? Yeah, this is just what I look like when I look in the mirror. That glow right there you see? It's not, it's not the lights, it's... Sorry, y'all will have to deal with it. All right, so this is, this is what, when, when I come to church on Sunday and I hear a message on whole family, 
and then I do nothing with that message, it's like I never heard it. It's like me going into the mirror and saying, wow, okay, green eyes, some bags under the eyes, little gray hair, overall rugged, handsome, good looks, but... <laughs> and then I step away, and I don't remember any details about what I just saw. Just like that. Just like that. And, and we're going to continue reading here in a second, but th this has really stuck out to me the last year or two, just reading God's word and, and wanting to ha make sure that it's getting applied in my life. Because we're going to talk about, it says, we're deceiving ourselves. When I think, when I think that I'm getting God's word, I'm coming to church, I'm reading my Bible, but if I'm not applying it, no, 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 it's not just if I'm remembering it. It, it doesn't, we're not talking about you remembering it. We're talking about us doing it. If I don't do what I hear, it's like I didn't even hear it. That's what we're talking about. If I didn't do what I hear, it's like I never heard it. Is this really blinding somebody? All right. All right, fine. We'll put the mirror up. I love how when this stuff came out, and Dustin was still up here. You just saw his legs sticking out from under here. That was, that was funny. Is this good? Everybody good? No? How about now? Ben, you like that? All right, y'all good? Okay. So when we're looking in verse 24 here, it says, For he observes himself, he goes away, and he forgets what kind of man he was. So this, the Aramaic word here for forgets, it can be translated to drift away from, to drift away from. So it's not like um, amnesia-like, like, like I, didn't, I didn't just forget that I had green eyes. I haven't forgot that yet. But if it's something that I don't apply, I can't apply green eyes. You get the point I'm trying to make. But if it's something that I don't apply, I will drift away. It's like I never even knew that to begin with, right? So it's like a drift away from what you heard. It's a subtle drift. It's like when you, have you ever been, this is dangerous, but have you ever been like driving and you're tired or late at night and you get somewhere and you're like, man, I did not remember that last 10 miles of road there. Everyone's nodding their heads. This is all dangerous. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy how this has happened to so many people. How many of you are thankful for the grace of God? It's the grace of God. I remember when I was dating my wife, she lived in Van Buren and I'd be hanging out there and you know, yeah, I'd have my second dinner, you know, I'd always, I'd have dinner, and then I'd have dinner at her house, and, and then we'd I'd stay there till whatever my curfew was, and then you're driving home, and I had basketball practice, I had, I had all kinds of stuff that day, and so I'm driving home, I hang my head out of my truck window to let the, like a dog, you know, just to let the, keep your eyes open type of deal, uh, that happened far too often, that's not good, don't do that, just pull over. Call an Uber. We have Ubers now. Does anyone Uber in Alma, Arkansas? Anyone seen an Uber around here? Really? Shoot, that's awesome. I wonder if I pulled up the app, it'd be like, yeah, they're 45 minutes out. There's no Ubers, like, right around here. But at least that's an option now. But, but really, that, that's what it's like. It's, kinda, it's just a subtle thing. And uh, the result of just looking, the result of just hearing... Um, he, he, here's what here's what hap, here's what happens. It's kind of like too when you're reading. Uh, you know when you're reading something, and something happens, you get distracted, and you have to just go read it again. And then you just have to read it again. You're like, what am I doing? I'm reading this. I'm not. I didn't understand or get anything that I just read. And you just have to do. That's kind of what it's like. That's kind of what it's like. And I think I think one of the reasons that we do this is that when we come to church. And we hear God's word, the reason that we tend to forget it and it kind of subtly drifts away is that we don't hear it with the intention of doing it. And so if we don't come to hear with the intention of doing, then we will likely forget what was taught. We'll forget that comparison is a thief and we'll not actually do anything with that word at all. And so let's finish reading here in James Let's go to verse 25. But he who, no, let's go back. Where, um, 
I want to start over in 22, in, in verse 22. So be, do, do, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, okay? So this is what we're leading ourselves into deception when we are just hearers of the word and we have no intention of doing it, okay? That's an important thing. I'm now deceiving myself. Okay, for if I'm not a hearer of the word, or if I'm just a hearer and not a doer, I'm like a man observing his face in a mirror. I observe myself, go away, and immediately forget what kind of man I was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. See that word? A doer of the work. The work. This one will be blessed, how? In what he does. This one will be blessed in what he does, in what he does. So another, another thing I had written down here, um, this, because it's more than just, um, all right, I came to church or I read my word, I hear this, and one of the reasons that we can fall into deception is that what we'll do is when something comes up in our life, uh, say a situation comes up and we have, a, we have an ache or something that's going on. I had an ache with my back this morning, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, you know, and you can just go on, and you can, and you can let something like that go. And if I said, man, I'm struggling with my back, and I had, you know, my wife or someone say, you know, that by Jesus' stripes, you are healed, what would my response be? I know. Yeah, I know. What's, what's my kid's response when I tell them 47 times, to do to something. I know. Really? You know? Because you haven't done jack crap with what you know. Oh, you know that by Jesus stripes you're healed? Well, what in the world are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? I'm deceived thinking that I actually know something that I don't know. I think that I've been given some information that I'm putting to use in my life, and I haven't. I don't really know what I think I know. I'm deceived. Right. I'm deceived right. because I haven't applied that. Yeah. But I will tell you, I did apply God's word because in Isaiah 53, it said, Surely he bore all my pain and sickness, Jesus did, in his body. And with his stripes, I am healed. Do not be putting up with pain in your body. If you're, if you're a born again, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, he has made a payment for all of your pain. He bore all of your pain and all of your sickness and all of your disease in his body so that you, by the straps he took on his back, would be healed. Jesus paid for that already. Don't be paying for it again. Don't pay for that again. He paid for it. So if I know something but I'm not doing it, then I don't really know. I know, kid, that you told me that you know, but you don't know. I would see it if you knew what you knew. I'd see something. If you knew what you say you knew, I'd see it. All right, we good? We think we're doing okay because of what we know, but our lack of action, our lack of doing, has us stalled out and deceived. So doing what I've heard from God's word reinforces it. Just like writing down what you're hearing right now, you know that this is why taking notes is important, and we mention it a lot, because a lot of times when you're just sitting here in the pew and you're hearing, but you don't actually write anything down ever, there's nothing being reinforced in, be, with what's being taught. This is why they say that when you write something down, you'll remember it better. When you write it down or you, or you type it out, you put it in a note, because you're having to put action to the actual letters that those words consist of, and it gets ingrained in you a little easier, right? So it's a, it's a reinforcement of what you're hearing. So I want to talk, I want to go over some scriptures today, and we're going to talk, I titled the next message, the next topic of this message here, and action, action, okay? Yep. It's time to take action right. with what we've heard. Turn to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua 1.8, so you're familiar with this. It says, the book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yeah. 
So when will you make your way prosperous and have good success? Y'all are just reading it again. That's good. That's good. <laughs> this, is an important, this is an important thing to look at. It shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do. The reason that it's not to depart out of your mouth and you're to speak God's word and think about God's word and meditate it is not for that purpose only. It's to observe to do that, to do God's word. So when you observe to do the meditation that's now in your heart, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. To do. Observe to do. Here's a truth bomb for you. Your actions reveal how badly you want something. This may be common sense to you. You may know that. But your actions reveal how badly you want something. If you say that something's a priority but you never act on it, then you don't really want it. Can we be honest this morning? You don't really want it. It's time to have an honest conversation with ourselves. My actions reveal my true motivations. My actions, how I live my life, reveals my true motivations. All right. I can tell y'all are hyped about this, so let's go to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, we're going to read verses 12 and 13. It says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions. So Paul's talking to the church at Philippi here. He's talking to believers. He's talking to the church. He said, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it's even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So who is responsible for the results of salvation to be shown in my life? I am. I am. He said, he said, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. This may sound, I, I don't know if you've, if you've ever read some of this, this may sound kind of weird to you because you're like, man, salvation is a gift from God. That's something that, that, that takes place in the heart, and you're exact, that's exactly right. And I want to read Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we'll, we can flip over to Ephesians 2.8. Um. But before we read that, salvation is a work of the heart, but it's not something that can be seen with the natural eyes. So can someone make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of their life, but live in such a way that I would never know that? Yeah, they they can. They can. Somebody can make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of their life, but live their life in a way that me from the outside looking at them would not ever know that. Just like what we were talking about earlier. If they never showed any type of love at all or walked in love, they may have made that decision to make Jesus the Lord of their life, but if there's no outward display of that, I would not be able to see it with my eyes. Now, a different conversation is if somebody says that they're born again and saved, but they are practicing, outwardly practicing sin, I would question that person's salvation. Because somebody who has truly given their life to the Lord does not desire to sin against the Lord. That doesn't mean that we won't mess up. We're all going to mess up. But you know what? I don't desire to mess up. I don't want to sin. I want to get out of sin. So anyone who has truly made Jesus the Lord of their life isn't like, Jesus is my Lord, so I can go do whatever I want. Not true. That's not true. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, you do not have an inclination to just like, whatever will be will be. I'll just do whatever I want. Jesus is Lord. I'm going to heaven. Jesus isn't your Lord. You're saying, you're saying that Jesus is your Lord, but he's not your Lord because you're going to go do whatever you want. So that doesn't mean that we're not going to mess up. But when we mess up, we don't want to mess up. And we want to be reconciled back to God when we mess up. Right? But there can be, when you give your life to the Lord and you're saved, and, but there's no outward display, like you, there's no uh, godly qualities or anything that I see maybe from a distance from you, that, that can happen. That can happen. Because we're to work out our salvation 
Salvation, what did it say here? What did Paul say? Work hard to show the results of your salvation. So here on this earth, there is something that you must do to show the results of your salvation. Are y'all with me? It's up to me if I want to be spirit ruled or flesh ruled. If I'm ruled by my flesh, you're not going to tell that you're like, that dude ain't saved. That's what you'll think. But, if, but I have a choice to be ruled by my spirit if I want to. Um, let's look at Ephesians 2.8 real quick, and we'll, we'll put a bow on this part. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. Thank you, Lord. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. We cannot earn salvation. What we're talking about today, the actions, the doing, the works, that is not to earn salvation. You cannot earn it. It is a free gift from God. And you receive it simply by placing your faith in the finished work of Jesus. You can't earn it. Look what he goes on to say here in verse 10. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. There are good things to do once Jesus has been made the Lord of your life. That he's planned for you to do. Somebody say do. 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 Good things for you to do. In Hebrews 6, it talks about how um, there there are good things that accompany salvation. You know that there are good things that accompany salvation? Those things are on the inside of you, and they're to be worked out. It's to be worked out. As we just saw that Paul told the church at Philippi, work hard to show the results of your salvation. There's something you must do there. Y'all with me? So it's clear that there are good things we're to do, right? There's action I need to take as a believer in Jesus. You don't have to, I suppose. You certainly don't have to, But there are things that you're leaving on the table. You know that you can experience heaven on earth right now if you want to. You can have heaven on earth. You can. You you cannot have it if you don't want to. But what I'm wanting to talk about today is us getting ourselves to a point of action and actually doing something with the word that we heard. I think sometimes we just kind of can go through the motions as Christians. It's like, you know... I'm going to go to church, I'm going to hear the word, I'm going to pray every so often, especially when I need to pray, I'll read my word every now and then, but, and there may be a few things that, that I end up doing, but we're not just too set on actions and showing the results of our salvation. I, I think people need to see the results of our salvation. People need to see that. We talk about going out and evangelizing today. Let me tell you something, if you went out and you didn't put love on, and you went out and tried to tell people about Jesus, stay put. Stay put. If you're not going to go and you're not going to do something in love, hey, do you know Jesus? No, we're going to hell. Sorry. (laughs) You get what I'm saying. There's an outward display and something that you must actually do. There's something on the inside that has to be worked out for someone else to experience it. Okay? Okay. So... Here's where we're getting to today. I want to talk about habits. Somebody say habits. Habits. How many of you think habits is a dirty word? A couple of you. Okay, awesome. Habits. So here's, when I was thinking about this, here here is something that I heard a long time ago. Hey, Ben, can you come help me set this up real quick? Ben's going to, he'll get a little camera on this so y'all can see it on the screen. It'll be easier for you. But here's something that I, when I was thinking about habits, that I heard a long time ago, um, and it's this right here. See if I can draw this big enough. You know how this works. Your handwriting is nice and big and neat, and by the time we get down there, it'll be sloppy and really small and off and crooked, but y'all will get it, okay? So my thoughts will lead to words, right? My words will lead to action. See what I did? I'm already... I went, I went normal here, and then I went all caps for some reason here. I don't, under, I don't understand. <laughs> then action, y'all get, these are arrows. Y'all get that, right? My actions will lead to habits. My habits will lead to character. 
to my character, and my character will eventually end up becoming my destiny, right? Have y'all heard this before or seen something like this? And so, see, that's true. Man, it's smaller, and it's all, down, it's all downhill somehow. But here, th- th- this, is, this is a true thing right here. So what happened? We're not working. Can y'all see this okay? Are y'all good? I know. Here, let me, let me move this back. Y'all good? All right, so we, I, I, I think we talk about, and rightfully so, we talk about these two things right here in church a lot, don't we? Our thought life and the words that we speak. We've done series on these, and for good reason, for very good reason. These right here, like we saw, this was Joshua 1.8 right here. This book of the law will not depart. Out. You're going you're gonna to meditate on it. It's not supposed to depart out of your mouth. Your words are going to even feed your thoughts more, and this becomes your meditation and what's in your heart, right? Right here is what's in your heart. So out of these two things right here will flow the issues of life. Right here, right? But what I found interesting is that what we were reading in James is that even this right here and everything, and really what I should draw, what I should have done here is, let me, let me, let me do something. I'm going to draw, try to draw. See if y'all can tell what this is. A boat? This is Pictionary. What? Close. No. What? Gates. You, oh, I went through this with you. You're my wife. That's all right. I'm a terrible draw. I'm a terrible. See, I've already, this should have been a lot bigger already. All right, look. Gate. Saloon. That's fine. That's what it is. It's saloon. Not very strong gates. You can just bust right through those, okay? Those saloon. I wouldn't know. I don't know how you know that, Pastor. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> All right. So, so we talk about this a lot in church too, right? This is super important. Gates. So what I feed my gates, my eyes and my ears, will determine the thoughts that I think, right? And so there may be a, there may be a thought that I think, like, There might be a a thought sneak through here because there was some type of input that went in, whether unbeknownst to me or I'm just listening or watching the wrong things, and a thought could come in. Well, I can use my words to direct that thought right back out the gate, like out, okay? You can get out. I'm to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and I'm I'm to be the one to say, no, you got to go this way, you're back out, or I'm going to let you pass through, and I'm going to use my words, right? But what I found interesting in in, in reading in James is that this area right here, I'll go back to the orange marker, this area right here, right before action, this this is a very deceptive area right here. Because unless I'm converting this stuff into action, I'm deceived. I'm deceived, and I think, I think that my life is going to be, let's say, my destiny, what, what we're talking about here is I want a whole family. I want my family to be whole. I want everything that has to do with whole family. This is what I want to identify as right here. I want, I want a whole family. And so when you think about from the end from the beginning, I want this, so what do I need to do to get this? And so we're hearing all of these, we're letting these come to church, we're coming to church, and we're getting these, these messages, these good words, and maybe we're saying some of them, but until we actually employ any, any of them in our lives, we're living in a place of deception, and we will never get to our destiny of having a whole family. We won't. And the thing is, is that we're going to have to start, and what I want to talk about for the rest of our little time here is habits. Until I start converting what I'm doing God's words into action in my life and creating godly habits, I will not ever end up where I want to. Right? Right. So, habits are important. And I think sometimes we we talk about habits and it has like this negative connotation because we just talk about bad habits. You know, habits are neither good nor bad. Habits are just effective or not effective. Right? Right? So it just depends on what you're calling a good or bad habit. Habits are supposed to be effective is what they are. So you know how when you're studying for a message, you may not know this, but 
you'll hear it a lot from the stage. You'll hear a lot of rhyming. You know, you know it's the Lord when it's rhyming or there's a lot of alliteration. So here's your little alliterate, alliterative, I don't know if that's a word saying. Having a whole family hinges on holy habits. How do you like that? I know that whole starts with a W, but it sounds like an H. So having a whole family hinges on holy habits. That's true. This is true. Having a whole family will hinge on the godly habits I've established in my life. So, I want to talk about the importance of developing these godly habits. And what's interesting is that I looked up, I did just a word study. The word habit is actually only used one time in the Bible. You might actually know where it's used, too. Uh, We're going to look at, we'll throw it up, Hebrews 10, if you can put up Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. It says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is a really pertinent verse for us right now because here's what I'm, here's what I'm not doing and here's what I'm not going to do because we place such an importance on coming to church. Like some of us, th- this shouldn't be a religious duty. But this should absolutely be a habit in your life of coming to church regularly. If you're coming, if you're coming to church regularly and you just have Sunday on your calendar, you're like, check, I went to church. This will not be happening in your life in the way that you want it to be. Okay? So it's not a box to be checked. It is, it is me placing myself where I want to get fed stuff into my gates that I need. Okay? So I'm coming here, and my gates are going to be flooded with the right thoughts, with the right words that should propel me to the right actions. And so it's vitally important. And so what I'm saying is the reason that we spend a lot of time talking about this right here is that without this, there is none of that. None of that. Now, keep in mind that this stuff right here, my character and my destiny, I can't just determine what I want my character to be. My character is an output, and it is a result of those things right there. I cannot change this. I cannot change this unless I first start right back there. But where sometimes I think we've got stuck is right here in the middle on action and habits. Sometimes we just fall short there. We are to be, there's a work that we are to be doing with the salvation that is on the inside of us. It is to be worked out, and I'm to be developing godly habits. And I'm not just talking about reading my Bible every day. Yeah, you better be reading your Bible. You better be spending time in prayer because that is fueling all of this stuff right here. That is your inputs. But I've got to start taking it a step further, farther, further, whichever one it is. I've got to take that next step, and I'm going to say today, Monday morning, I'm going to act on the word that that I heard yesterday. I heard yesterday that comparison is a thief, and so today I I am going to be vigilant to make sure that I don't compare myself to anyone, to my status in life to anyone else's, my anything to anyone else's. And instead of doing that, you know know what the antidote to comparison is? Being thankful for what you have. I'm going to employ Thanksgiving in my life today on Monday. You know what I'm doing? I'm now putting action to what I heard. I'm putting action to God's word. And it's not, you know what I had to do to do that? I had to use my words. I'm making a plan right now that tomorrow morning, this is what I'm going to do on Monday. Uh Ben Franklin said, if you plan to fail, you're failing to, if you, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. They're both true. If you fail to plan, guess what you're doing? You're planning to fail. If you're sitting in here right now saying that, okay, this is good but you're not going to end up doing with it. You're just sitting here planning to fail. It's okay to go ahead and make a plan and say, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this tomorrow. A long way off, that message. I'm going to talk today. I'm going to talk to my kids, and I'm going to speak to their identity in Christ and who they are, and I'm not going to focus and tell them what they've not done and they've done this and that. I will do zero of that today, and I'm going to speak to who they are in Christ. That's what I'm doing today. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm doing it. This is what I'm acting on today. And so I understand that it can get overwhelming if we're thinking, okay, there's been these seven messages. It's not that there's just something different from all these messages that we have to apply. There there is and there there could be, 
But here's the point. We've got to take something. We have to start somewhere with something that we've heard that God has told us, and we have to put it to action. You know the beautiful thing about habits is that I don't, I don't ever think about brushing my teeth. I do it every single morning and every night and another time if I've had a lot of candy or something. Okay? I don't ever think about it. Ever. I don't have to. It's ingrained in who I am. Okay? It's what I do. You, there will come a time when you're doing this where you don't have to think about comparing yourself to someone else. You've just gone so long with not doing it that that's just who you are. I don't have to do that. I'm thankful for what God's done for me. Look around at what God's done for me. He's been so good to me. I'm so thankful. I don't, I ever, I don't have to think about it anymore. And so let's let it not be overwhelming that there's so many things that we have to do to get there. That's not how habits work. I want to read the definition of habit for you because that's what we do. We define words. It says, uh, a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior. It's an acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. Or, I like this one, a behavior pattern acquired by frequent repetition. A behavior pattern acquired by frequent repetition. So some of the things that we just mentioned, and one of them, you know, what I want to focus on right now is going back to, to Pastor Evan's message about love, and this is why the Bible is kind of clear about this, is like, man, when you love your neighbor as yourself, and you love the Lord your God with all your heart, like, the, all of the, everything else will hang on these two things right here. It'll hang on love. And so, one of the things that you talk about, there's this thing called stacking habits. Like, once you, once you, like, start doing a habit, and keep in mind that a habit isn't something that you just have to do over time. It's not just like, the passage of time is what ingrains the habit in you. It's the rate and the frequency at which you perform something, okay? So it's not like, well, I didn't do that for a month straight, so it's not a habit. Whatever they say, if you do this for 10,000 hours or whatever it is, it's the frequency at which you do something that, so guess what you're going to have an opportunity to do every single day, multiple times a day? Walk in love with other humans. You, you've got that opportunity all day, all day, every day. To walk in love. And the cool thing about God is that all these other things hang on that right there. And so if you want to start practicing something, man, I would, I would beef up on what God says about walking in love and love and say, you know what, Monday morning, tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every opportunity I have to walk in love with someone. I'm going to respond to them the way I would want to be responded to. I'm going to, I'm actually going to prefer someone else today instead of what I want. When they talk about where to go to lunch, this is for me, I'm going to, I'll just go where they want, and I won't even have an opinion today, all right? Again, that's just for me. If that's for y'all, you know, maybe you need to hear from God on that. Maybe you want to prefer where Landon wants to go to lunch. I don't know. Y'all might want to walk in love. But, but if you say Panera, this was funny. My first day working here was like oh, six years ago. And they're like, okay, we're gonna take, we're gonna go to lunch today, Landon. Where do you want to go? And I'm like, back then, like, it's okay now, but I did not like Panera. I'm like, I'm out. There's so many better places than Panera bread. But I'm like, I wanted to go somewhere else, and they took me to Panera. I'm like, what? What are y'all? What are we doing here? Y'all asked me where I wanted to go, and I, I said, I don't want to go there. So you take me there. <laughs> not walking in love. Not. <laughs> Oh, man. Counting. Yeah, I know. I'm counting. I'm not counting those things. There you go. We talked about that in small group last night. Don't count. We don't, we don't count. Okay. All right. So habits are important, okay? Um, how many of you, this, is, this isn't a, a biblical book or anything, but I read this book by, from James Clear called Atomic Habits. It's a really good book uh, just, just talking about habits and just some things that you probably know but will be, will be good to hear again. Um, habits, they're like compound interest. So habits will, will compound. They don't just add up, they'll compound. So the more of like just godly habits that you're implementing in your life, they're going to compound in your life like compound interest does. And this, this is the hallmark of any compounding process is that the most powerful outcomes are delayed. 
Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? Like, I don't see the effect of compound interest early on in that process. The, the outcomes of that are delayed. And so sometimes I think, man, I've been walking in love for three straight days. Where the crap is my whole family at? Hey, you just got to stay at it. This, what do we always talk about when we're talking about habits and stuff, like working out? Man, I've been working out for three days. Why don't I look like that? What are you, a moron? You got a lot to, you got a lot to, uh, you know, where you got to get there. I mean, let's just be real. We've got to get there. But this is what, even when it comes to working out, you know what? Like, sometimes I'm not, I'm not really... Um, when it comes to working out, I'm not too c- concerned with, like, how much weight I'm losing or what I'm going to look, all that. All I'm concerned about is showing up. I just want to show up. I'm just going to keep showing up. I'm going to show up on Monday, and I'm going to do the work. And I'm going to show up on Wednesday morning because I only I don't work, work out about three times a week. And I'm going to do the work, okay? But you know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to show up tomorrow morning, and I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to do the dang work. I'm going to show up on Tuesday morning, and I'm going to walk in love. And I'm going to show up, and I'm going to do the work. And the best thing, sorry, I got something in my mouth. The best thing about compounding is people think this, is that the truth is that a lost day hurts you more than a good day helps you. So I could have a really good day in the gym and put up some big weight and, and really get somewhere, I think. But if I just miss one of the days I'm supposed to be there, that's going to hurt me more than that good day helped me. It's a compounding thing. And so I never want to interrupt, I don't want to interrupt any, any, the flow of my habits and what I'm doing unnecessarily. I don't want to interrupt that. And we put it this way, don't take a zero. Don't put up a zero that day. Do something. If you think, man, I had an opportunity, yeah, y'all better come and shut me down. If I had an opportunity to walk in love today and maybe I missed it, I, I'm not out of time yet. Don't put up a zero. There's something that you can do to show love to somebody. If you, if you miss it with a person, pull out your phone and call that person. Send them a text. Walk in love with them. It's not too late. Don't put up a zero. And you know what you're going to do is if you can do that, that that's going to become so ingrained in who you are that you're not, it's like brushing your teeth. You're not going to have to think about it anymore. And so uh, let me close. I'll close with this scripture right here if you can get ready. Uh, I think we're, you know what's funny is I wanted to do this because when I was studying, I was in my office and I got on my board and I don't, I don't really typically act like this, but I'm like, I just started going, you seen that, that gif of the dude who's like doing all the math and he's like, I'm like, I had it all over my board. I had to take a picture of it so I wouldn't forget it. And I didn't write down all the stuff that I originally had. Um, Let me see if I missed something important here. Hey, so this is good. When you're talking about destiny, like when this is like when we're talking about our, our goals or whatever. So you need to start like right here and identify what you want. Identify who you are. Because you're going to have to go back to that at some point. I said, when I identify with who I truly am, then it helps fortify my gates. This right here will help me right here. Because if I say that I want something, then I'm going to make sure that I'm not letting certain things come through my gates, and I am going to make sure certain things do come through my gates because it's going to get me to there, right? All right, let's close with um, a passage in Acts. No, yes, Acts chapter 10. So I want us, here's what, here's what I want us to do. When I'm, when I'm writing out a message, I write down three things. What do I want you to know? What do I want you to feel? What do I want you to do? And I want, I want you to find a habit to develop, just one. Make a plan for it and do it. Find something. Find something that we've talked about in this whole family series. I want you to plan to do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If, if you're like, man, if you're struggling, pull your notes back out. Reinforce what you've heard and why you're doing that. And stay with it and do it Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. We don't take weekends off when it comes to godly habits. I'm going to do it Saturday. I'm going to do it Sunday morning. I'm going to church. I don't have to do that today. You're especially going to have to do it at church. 
Sunday and let's do it all over again. Make a plan. If you're just gonna go out here and not make a plan to do any of it, this was another message. That what you just did is you came in here and you checked your box and it, to the end of nowhere, ending nowhere. Let's do something with what we've heard. Acts chapter 10. Uh, one through four. It says, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius st stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And if you know the rest of the story, this is where God gives Peter a vision, where Peter's somewhere else, and t basically tell him, Pete, and the, he sends men. He said, hey, Peter's over here. Send, some, send your men to go get him. God showed Peter that too. Peter came with him. They all received Jesus. His entire household got saved. And I want you to see what he did. It says, he gave generously to those in need, and he prayed to God regularly. And so we see that he had some habits he did something regularly. Cornelius had some habits, and I want you to just notice how it affected and it changed his entire family tree. And so just like Pastor Nate was talking about earlier, your decisions, they don't just affect you. It may be a personal decision, but it is not just affecting you. Your decisions, the, what you do with God's word, the habits that you have will affect your destiny. They will. And I think so often we're just focused on, listen, if you've, developed, if you've developed bad habits, if there are habits in your life that are leading you to an end that is not for a whole family, there's plenty, of that, there's plenty of that stuff out there. You know what you can do? Those bad habits can be cut off at the same time that you're establishing good habits. And it all is gonna start right here. What are you allowing to come through your gates to form your thoughts? Right there. Why don't we stand this morning? <clears throat> Your prayers and gifts have, to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. He had habits, he had godly habits that led him to an encounter with God that changed his family forever, forever. And the same can be said for us. The actions and the habits that we employ in our life right now can and will, they will affect my family in some way or another. And the beautiful part about God's love for us is he's given us a choice to get to choose him to do that. Amen? He's so good. He's so good. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we, we're asking you for your grace and just... Just like we read earlier, we're so grateful that it is you who's working in us, both to will and to do of what pleases you. And so thank you that we're not left on our own to just to try to form, to create, to fulfill godly habits in our lives. No, no, no. It's you who's working in us, both to will and to do it. So we thank you that there is the grace to do because Jesus is our Lord salvation is on the inside of us there is something in there that can be worked out and it's your grace and it's your power made available to us to live your way to live your way father we want your ways we want your ways and so we thank you for that father and I, that's my prayer for every person in this place father that they would tap into the grace on the inside of them to live your way and to work out their salvation from the inside out. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's start doing that this week. But hey, before we're dismissed, maybe you're like, man, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. That, that's key number one right there. There is nothing good in there to work out until Jesus has been made the Lord of your life. And so I want to give anyone that opportunity. If you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, just slip up your hand. Let's pray. We'll, we'll make heaven your home for eternity today. 
Man, what a miracle that is. And you'll have everything you need to live a godly life and to change your family forever. Anybody in here? Raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Then you you know what that means? That means that everybody in here, God's working in you both to do what his will says and give you the power to actually do it. You've got that on the inside of you. You know what that means? There's no excuses. No excuses for me. I'm going to start stacking godly habits in my life and see my family be whole in every way. Amen. 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 All right. Pastor, you got anything before we close? All right. We love you guys. Hey, come back this afternoon for evangelism at 4, and then we've got some awesome things happening this next week, so we'll see you back here. Have a great day.